This is the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast, session number 240, Richard Nongard's Future of Hypnosis Keynote. Welcome to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast with Jason Lynette, your professional resource for hypnosis training and outstanding business success. Here's your host, Jason Lynette. Welcome back to the program, or kind of welcome back to the program, because technically I guess I'm taking this week off to instead share the stage with frequent guest of the program, Dr. Richard Nongard, who many of us were off at the Mid-America Hypnosis Conference just north of Chicago back in October 2019. And this is a phenomenal convention I've spoken at many times over and definitely looking forward to going back to once again in 2020. The website for that event is mid hyphen americaconference.com. We're going to link to that over in the show notes. And this is one you want to make sure you're absolutely there for. Well, in 2017, I did the keynote there. And then this year, Richard Nongard did the keynote. And we had my camera running, got phenomenal sound, and I thought it was a message that was meant to be shared with a much bigger audience. And that's why we're putting it out this week, which I'm going to give you two options here, as we often do. Option one is you can continue to listen to this podcast because, hey, that's why you downloaded it. Option two is that if you head over to the show notes at worksmarthypnosis.com and find the specific listing for this episode, we're actually going to embed the video of this presentation there too, which if you want a uh, carrot to be dangled to watch the video instead, Richard is wearing these sort of uh, Keds style shoes that say hypnotist on them because that's a choice, but I'm jealous and they're phenomenal. Though also at the Mid-America Hypnosis Conference, is where Dan Kandel gifted me a pair of dress-up purple shoes, and they're amazing. He sent me the photo, and I responded, size 9, and apparently happy birthday, so thanks, Dan. They're amazing. So in this keynote, he's going to talk about sort of the nature of the various hypnotic organizations, the state that we have so many conferences that are popping up, and how we find ourselves in this incredible opportunity, as he says, to be the beacon for hypnosis and share the lasting transformation that it brings to people in every area of life. Talking about the efficacy of the research of hypnosis and really just setting a solid foundation for how it is that we can represent ourselves as part of this world, both professionally and just integrated into our societal systems. For more like this, couple of options to hang out with us further. Yes, we've got the upcoming ICBCH Train the Trainer events, which if you're listening in time, we've got an event coming up in Springfield, Virginia. And then after the ICBCH Winter Hypnosis Conference, we're going to be doing it there as well out in Las Vegas, which check out that convention as well, which simply put head over to the show notes at worksmarthypnosis.com. That's where you can watch the video of this presentation. You can get the links over to the upcoming convention, the upcoming Coming train the trainer events. And I'll also link over to my Work Smart Hypnosis Live for those of you looking to get trained in hypnosis. While you're online too, check out hypnoticworkers.com. This is the all access pass to my hypnosis training library, which here's a bit of a fun fact. Many people actually go through the workers course and then actually join me for the live event. Work Smart Hypnosis Live. But at the same time, too, many people come in fresh and new for Work Smart Hypnosis Live, which then you get Hypnotic Workers as part of it. So for anyone out there who's already inside of HypnoticWorkers.com, just message me directly. We figure out the math in terms of the difference, and that's all you owe to attend the live version of the events. So check that out, either HypnoticWorkers.com or WorkSmartHypnosisLive.com, everything in the show notes online. And with that, let's jump directly into this content pack session. Thank you to Richard, as well as Carm and Karen, everybody at the Mid-America Hypnosis Conference for being all right with letting us broadcast this to anybody and everybody, because you all ought to hear this one. So here we go, episode number 240, Richard Nongard's Future of Hypnosis Keynote. Happy Saturday. I'm glad to be here. This is probably about the fifth time I've been to this conference. The first time I came was probably about 11 or 12 years ago. I did the stage show with John Serbone right here on this fine stage but I'm glad that they replaced us with Michael DeShallot because as I understand what from people told me, it was a much better show. <laughs> so, but this conference has always been a conference I've really enjoyed. The topic today is the future of hypnosis is bright. And the reason why that is the topic is because we have a natural tendency as people to always pay attention to what's wrong. 
I think this is true in, 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 in our relationships. It's true in the weather in the city where we live. People in Vegas are complaining it's too hot. People in Chicago are complaining there's too much snow. At work, we always pay attention to what's wrong. Why the new boss is not any better than the old boss or why this organizational structure isn't any better than that organizational structure. And because hypnotists, believe it or not, are actually people too, I think we <laughs> fall into that same tendency sometimes to look at what is wrong. And we say things like, oh my gosh, people don't understand how hypnosis works. Or we say things like, the organizations actually aren't organizing very well. Or they say things like, there are limitations and things that aren't actually working. And, and they become, become frustrated by, and maybe at this point, after all the research we've done, not being able to clearly articulate a clear understanding that's universally understood by everybody as to how hypnosis works. And we pay attention to what's wrong. This conference has always been one, one of my favorite conferences because it's one of those conferences that actually pays attention to what's right. Yesterday, I was blown away by the quality of presenters who are providing training on some pretty uplifting and some pretty awesome topics. And did you notice something cool? The cool thing was, if you were lining up to pay for a two-hour workshop, you didn't have to do that anymore. A round of applause for Karma on that one, right? <laughs> And the reason why that's a significant change is it's just more evidence that this profession is moving in the right direction. And so, because I always like to have a list, I have a handy little list here with all kinds of cool things that tell us that the future of hypnosis is bright. First on the list, we're here. You're here. Give yourself a round of applause for being here. There are a ton of hypnosis conferences. There are a lot of opportunities to learn online. But you chose to be here, and the cool thing about being here is I've had the chance to meet several people, actually a lot of people, who are here and are brand new to hypnosis. This is a field that continually is bringing new people on board, and that's pretty cool. It's not stagnant. I go to a lot of other conventions. I've been to the American Counseling Association's convention. I've been to associations of marriage and family therapist conventions. In fact, last year I went to the mobile discount cell phone communication conference. <laughs> I live in Las Vegas, so we have a conference for just about anything. And what's amazing is that every time I go to those conferences, I actually see the same people year after year after year. But when I walked in the door this year, um, I, I, I saw people I didn't recognize. And the cool thing is, they didn't know who I was. Because if they don't know who I am either, they haven't been on the internet in the last 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't bought a book on hypnosis in the last 20 years. Or they're brand new. And it's awesome, because I love when I meet people who say, are you a hypnotist too? Yes, I'm also a hypnotist. <laughs> and there's a lot of new life in this room. It's not only at this conference, it's also at all the conferences that I attend. At HypnoThoughts this past year in August, it was really pretty incredible to see all the new people who had not only never been to HypnoThoughts before, but had never been to any conference before and had begun to look at the practice of hypnosis, not just as something for their own personal life, but something that they, they could share with others. And that's pretty cool. Number two on my list. The future of hypnosis is bright because times are changing. Not only because you don't have to pay 20 bucks for a two hour class now. Some of you didn't know that until just now. You're like, oh, I could have gone to those yesterday. Ah. The two hour classes will be full this <laughs> afternoon. But the hypnosis organizations seem to actually be playing nice with each other. It was just about a year ago that I was sitting at home and my phone rang and it was Michael DeShallot. Michael DeShallot called me up and said, hey, uh, I got a call. Uh, there's a hypnosis organization that's going to be doing a conference here in Las Vegas. Uh, the American or the Society for Clinical and Experiential Hypnosis, SCEH, and they want us to do a presentation on stage hypnosis. And so my answer to, to Michael was, <laughs> you have your acronym screwed up, SCEH. 
actually doesn't want us to do a presentation on stage hypnosis. And he said, no, 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 they do. I said, I said, well, you have your acronyms mixed up. I mean, maybe ACHE wants us to come do something on stage hypnosis, but the psychologists don't want us to come do a presentation on stage hypnosis, Michael. So get your acronyms right. And he said, no, it is the psychologists. It is S-C-E-H. Now, a lot of you are familiar with ASH, the American Society of Clinical Hypnotists, also part of the American Psychological Association. ACHE are the researchers, those are the academics, those are the universities that do studies into the effectiveness of hypnosis. And we all know that those folks don't like us, right? Right. <laughs> and now Michael DeShallot is calling me to say, they want us to do a presentation panel on stage hypnosis. I said, you gotta be kidding me. All right, let's do it. So Kat Hickland and I, we showed up in enemy territory. <laughs> Milton Erickson's daughter was there. It was, uh, there, there, there were, uh, Michael Yapko was there. Uh, a bunch of people who historically haven't really liked us were there, and their Kat and Michael and I sat on a panel talking about stage hypnosis. My favorite part of the whole presentation was not the profound stuff that I uttered to help them understand the perspective that is different than their perspective, but when they said, what's your favorite induction? And Michael DeShallot looked at him and said, chloroform. It was as, as if they had never seen a comedy hypnosis show before and didn't know what a joke was. <laughs> well, we had a chance to share for an hour and a half and to answer their questions about uses of hypnosis, which historically they have rallied against. And so I had an HPTI class coming up. The HPTI class is a mentorship class that I teach online every quarter. It's 12 weeks long. It's actually a great class. In our class, we were going to be using the textbook, Trance Work by Michael Yapko. So I sent Yapko an email since they invited us to, to their event. And I said, hey, would you come to my class and talk about your book and about hypnosis research to the students at HPTI? And what do you think the answer was? Yeah. Yeah. You'd, you'd think the answer would be no. And it might have been two, three, four, five, and it certainly would have been 10 years ago but the answer was yes, wow. I'll be there. Wow. He committed 20 minutes and he stayed for over an hour and 15 minutes and contributed to our community. And although I've been to many ASH events in the past, I wasn't invited to play in any reindeer games for a long, long time. <laughs> and so in December, I'll be at the Milton Erickson Foundation for their annual event this fall. And I'm looking forward to having the chance to talk to Jeff Zeig, to talk to Michael Yapko again, talk to Bill O'Hanlon. And one of the things that I'm seeing is the historical dissension between the various hypnosis organizations and the different, the different sort of tribes of hypnotists coming together. By the way, I give a lot of that credit to HypnoThoughts. HypnoThoughts is the convention that has brought everyone together and said, we basically don't care what you're into as long as you're interested in hypnosis. And we want everybody to play nicely together and to have an opportunity to share and to learn from each other. And that example that's been set in August for the last six years is affecting our profession in a number of different ways. And every single one of the ways is positive. So give Richard Clark a round of applause. That's actually pretty cool. In fact, it's been so successful that HypnoThoughts, like an amoeba, has cut itself in half and self-replicated with a HypnoThoughts Platinum version in San Diego this fall. Now, the interesting thing about that is it occurred to me one day, there are a lot of hypnosis conventions, a lot. You have a convention next week in Toronto. I think that's a HypnoBiz conference. You have New York coming up. You have Hypno, Hypno Biz Amsterdam popping up, which I'm gonna be a speaker at because I love Amsterdam. It's one of my, it's, I say it's my, my third favorite city. My first is Singapore because the weather's way better and the food is way better. 
my second is Prague because my sister lives there, so I kind of know my way around. And so third is Amsterdam. But the cool thing about this is there are lots of opportunities to learn hypnosis. And the negative mind says, oh my gosh, there's too many hypnosis conventions. You have the Mid-America Conference in Chicago. You have the Heartland Hypnosis Conference in St. Louis. You have the HypnoBiz Conference apparently all over the planet Earth. You have, you, 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 you have, you, you have, you have HypnoThoughts being an amoeba and splitting itself in two and creating double the opportunity for one low price. Uh, you have the HPTI ICBCH Winter Hypno Conference, which by the way, of all, my, all the conferences is my favorite. <laughs> And there's really one reason, and that is because if you're looking for somewhere to be in February, Vegas is about your best choice. <laughs> I mean, so even if the conference sucks, you'll still be happy that you're there. But a lot of people, the negative mind would say, there's too many conferences. Here's the thing. The conferences are becoming fuller and fuller. New people are at each and every conferences. There aren't too many conferences. There are the right number of conferences with new opportunities in new places. IMDH, IMDHA is moving to Orlando so people have greater accessibility. IHF has a, has a great event every year in just out in the Bay Area. And, and last year I was gonna drive up but it just seemed like a long drive through the desert, so I, so I didn't. But all of these conferences actually are good news. It's good news because every one of these conferences is bringing new people into the profession. One of my concerns over the years has been the fact that in order to establish our credibility, most of the associations have increased the number of hours required. It's always interesting how the in crowd always decides there should be more than they had to do in order to become a hypnotist so they can value themselves because they have the expert level of training and it takes you know, billions of hours apparently to do hypnosis. <laughs> the reality is though, that while I think standards are a good thing, the reality is there's a need to mint new hypnotists. When we mint new hypnotists, then we create opportunity for all of us. There is no such thing, such thing as competition in our industry, and the reason why there's no such thing as competition in our industry is there are not enough hypnotists in your city. How do I know that? In my building in Las Vegas, I'm the only hypnotist. There are probably seven or eight social workers, psychologists, marriage and family therapists. In all the buildings in my little quadrant in Las Vegas that surround my office, there's one hypnotist and there's probably, probably 200 licensed mental health professionals providing mental health treatment services. By the way, those folks aren't competition because we do something entirely different. It is a distinct profession who offers opportunities to a population that is entirely different than the population of mentally ill folks seeing those professionals. But in Las Vegas, we have a meetup group and I think that Michael and I have finally made contact with just about everybody in Las Vegas who's working as a hypnotist. We have two million people in the valley and we have 12 people at our meeting. <laughs> Every now and then somebody who has a mindset of scarcity says, another hypnotist moved into my building or down the street. I hope more hypnotists move down my street and into my building. The reason why is we know that when there are more of us, we'll be more successful. There's a reason why across from every target is a Walmart and it's next to a Kmart. And the reason why is because when they're together, they thrive. But when they're alone, they fail. The shopping mall. The shopping mall is a testament to the power of groups. Sure, the shoe stores are in competition with each other, but by the way, did you see my shoes? Are those awesome? Or are they awesome? Yeah. And these will be available at my table for $49.99. I'm, I'm not selling shoes. But the reason why the mall is good for shoe stores is nobody's gonna drag their butt all across town to go to a shoe store. What if they don't have the shoes you want? You wasted that time, you wasted that effort. You wanna go to where there's 10 shoe stores. And the fact of the matter is there aren't enough hypnotists. Every now and then I, 
I hear a hypnotist say something about the negative impression the public has about hypnosis because of this event or because of that event. Just recently, there was a TV show that came out where stage hypnosis was the centerpiece of having people do stupid things on TV and people rallied on the internet about how horrible this was because it made us all look bad. And if you look at the ratings of that TV show, <laughs> nobody was watching it. <laughs> nobody was watching it. The fact is, we're not even a blip on the public consciousness. Most of the people, when we came into this hotel and said, where's the hypnosis convention, said, what? What kind of convention? There's a hypnosis convention? What's a hypnotist? People actually don't know what we do, who we are, or the services that we offer. There is not a problem with negative exposure in the media environment about hypnosis. What there is, is a complete, total lack of awareness. Which means we actually still have the opportunity to share the facts of hypnosis with the public and put a positive message out there that helps people understand what we're doing. It's not too late. And because of that, the future of hypnosis is actually, I think, pretty bright. Now, let's take a look at the sheets here. Ah, oh, great. I brought some visual aids. I wrote a book. I didn't write a book. It's not really a book. It's a, it's a booklet. I put together a booklet. I didn't even write it. I copied the stuff. It's titled 101 Proofs Hypnosis Heals Faster, Recovers Stronger, and Works in Medical Treatment. And the reason why I created it in this little paperback version is because uh, two years ago at HypnoThoughts, I gave it to everybody who registered, right? So I always like to give good swag whenever I put stuff in the swag bag there. And so I'm out of these. I only have a handful of these left. But I'll give it to you free online. Okay, so there's a PDF version. And if you go to my website, which is subliminalscience.com backslash 101-proofs, you can actually, uh, 101 resources, no, no, subliminalscience.com backslash 101 resources, right? Or, or just send me an email or hit me up at my table and I'll tell you how to get a copy of this. But the cool thing about this is that the research is in. There are over 12,000 peer-reviewed studies that show that hypnosis is an effective tool to help people heal faster, recover stronger, and works in medical treatment. By the way, those are just the studies in the field of medical treatment. What about the studies in the field of personal performance, enhancing academic performance, sports performance, helping people to achieve personal goals? That's not medical treatment. Stepping into confidence, stepping into abundance, creating prosperity in their lives. 12,000 peer-reviewed journals that show the efficacy of hypnosis. And here's the cool thing. Many of those journals actually show that hypnosis is the best intervention for a wide variety of problems. Not a useful tool or intervention, but actually the best. Two of those areas, pretty fascinating, irritable bowel syndrome. Specifically what's referred to as the Manchester Protocol, an eight session protocol in dealing with the physical experiences people have that they find so distressing related to irritable bowel syndrome. A first line intervention, another area that I thought was pretty fascinating the area of menopause and the symptom of alleviating hot flashes. A first-line intervention, one of the most effective tools, most of you know that my favorite hypnosis induction includes an element of autogenic training from creating from within. And one of the, one of the training tools that people create from within is the feeling of calm and the feeling of cold. And every time I do that induction, the clients who I work with who have come to me for one reason, but say, hey, I'm a woman who's been experiencing hot flashes. This is something I find really useful. I, I try to share more with them about the benefits of hypnosis. But what this tells us, this research tells us, is that hypnosis, and I hear people describe it this way, hypnosis is a complementary and alternative therapy. Take that off your website. It's not. It's a first-line intervention. It is a preferred method with many clients. We're not just a complementary and alternative therapy doing our woo-woo over here while somebody else does something that actually works. What we're doing actually works, and sometimes it actually works better, and that is pretty darn cool. That's just the 12,000 studies that use the word hypnosis. 
There are a lot of studies out there that never use the word hypnosis. They use words like insight meditation, or they use words like, like uh, autogenic training, or they use words like visualization, or they use words like breath therapy, or they use words like progressive muscle relaxation. And, and when we look at the many studies that never use the word hypnosis, but use the techniques that we all recognize as hypnosis, what we see is that there are hundreds of thousands of studies out there to show that the work we do actually works to help people change their lives. Pretty cool, huh? The future of hypnosis is bright because not only, know, not only do we know that hypnosis works, we now actually know what methods of hypnosis works. Every one of those research articles that comes to a conclusion that hypnosis is actually a useful tool that actually helps people make changes actually goes on to describe the methods of hypnosis they used in order to discover those results. What that becomes for us is a compendium, an encyclopedia, if you will, of strategies and techniques with proven efficacy. How would you like to be able to move from tradition in the approach that you use to a set of skills and resources backed by the research? Anyone think that would be pretty powerful? How many of you in trying to do marketing or, uh, or, or sales with clients, wish that you were able to say, not only does the research show that what I do is highly effective for what you're asking me to do, but the methods that I'm using are the most effective methods in the field of hypnosis. You think that'd be pretty powerful? Of course it would. And the future of hypnosis is bright because this isn't 40 years ago. And we now know not only that it works, but we actually know what works. And that's pretty cool. One of the things that works, of course, is the idea of staying in the present. I don't think I've ever done a class yet where I haven't quoted my favorite philosopher, the great Master Ugwe. And the great Master Ugwe, of course, said, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. All we have is the present. And that's why it's a gift. And of course, the great master Uguay was the turtle from Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and his words of wisdom, I think, are a real inspiration. Because what he was talking about dovetails the last 30 years worth of research in the field of contextual psychology. And contextual psychology is the discipline within the therapeutic community that's moved away from behavioralism and moved away from Sigmund Freud and moved into what is called third wave behavioralism or contextual psychology and focuses on the present experience. In the past, the approach of Freud and Janner was, lay on the couch and tell me about your mother. And after seeing a client two times a week for 10 years, maybe there'll be some change. And as hypnotists, we of course were heavily influenced by this idea that tell me about your mother was really important because that's actually what Freud taught. But what we now know is, no matter what our client's prior experience was, although the past does bring us to where we are today, the only thing we can actually impact is the present moment. And we do that by training folks in the skill of mindfulness, bringing their attention back to the present moment. It's a powerful technique that's useful to all of us in the field of hypnotists and can really break that cycle of misery that many of us experience in only knowing one traditional approach. Often the approach of, let me go back and regress to the cause. What Uwe is telling us is, no matter what the past held, the past is history. It's the present that's of chief importance to us. That does not mean, by the way, that Richard is anti-regression. It just means that in our field, we have often, out of tradition, put the cart before the horse. I think regression is a great relapse prevention tool, but let me make the change first. Then we can go figure out the whys as a relapse prevention tool. And it makes a great strategy for that. But the research actually informs us as to what techniques are truly helpful. And that's really pretty cool because it means all of us can work not only from a base of confidence because we've seen clients make substantial changes, 
but also because we know that the methods we're using are the methods that are most likely to help a person make change. Now here's a cool thing. I noticed last night when I was sitting at the dinner table, our voices are being heard in new ways. In the past, the only time I ever saw a hypnotist in the public eye was when something negative happened. Hypnotist, you know, hypnotizes clients and takes advantage of them and ends up in the headline of the newspaper. Seems to, seems to have happened historically in our field about once every four or five years or every six or seven years. Always a bummer when people don't have training in professional ethics. I think all the professional associations require at least some training in professional ethics and it's pretty clear that sometimes people don't pay too much attention, but I think that's important. Or when I saw hypnotists in the public eye, it was Wendy on daytime talk show, or it was Tom Silver doing something in nighttime talk show. Or, uh, you know, I, I guess back in the, back in the day, uh, uh, sunglasses. Uh, Jim Wand. Not, no, not Jim Wand, uh, uh, Marshall Silver on late night TV, you know. But our voices are being heard in new ways. I was sitting at a table yesterday with a bunch, with a bunch of people and realized that the entire bunch of people had done a TED talk, and had done a TED talk on the subject of hypnosis in one way or another. Jason Lynette was one of those folks. Martin Peterson was one of those folks. Uh, I was one of those folks. Jess, Jess, where's Jess? Is she here? Jess is one of those folks. Her TED talk was absolutely fascinating. It was really, really wonderful. Uh, Dan Candell is another person who did a TED talk. And, and hypnotists who have done a TED talk is no longer cool. It's no longer cool because everybody's doing it. <laughs> and the cool thing about everybody doing it is that the word is getting out. And it's getting out in somewhere other than simply daytime TV. It's getting out on new media where people are actually paying attention. And that's really pretty cool because it's bringing positive attention once again to our profession. I really have to appreciate Jason for one thing. And that is that over the past couple of years, he's been my go-to guy for business success. And, and when I first met Jason, I don't even remember how long ago it was, six, seven years ago, I thought to myself, who is this guy? What's he got going on? And, and, and I wasn't quite sure. And I quickly learned that he was probably the best at business among all of us. And by the way, I've always thought I was pretty good at it. And, and so even though I was pretty good at it, I said, I'm gonna learn from this guy because he's got a, a lot of really cool stuff. But here's the thing. He not only taught me some cool stuff, I see him out there teaching everybody stuff. And that has excited me so that I can teach people really cool stuff as well. And what's happened in the last, I'm gonna call it six or seven years, is a professionalization of the profession as we learn how to be entrepreneurs. Almost all of us took a hypnosis certification training course that taught us how to do good hypnosis. And people graduate those courses and they have the dream of having a, a, a desk with a rolly chair and a microphone and a, and a recliner for a client. <laughs> but they open the office, they build it and nobody comes. <laughs> They realize then that build it and they will come is only for Hollywood movies. It actually doesn't happen in real life unless you know how to run a business. And the result is that hypnosis training programs are not, not only teaching people how to be excellent clinicians, but they're actually teaching people how to actually run a business, how to be successful. Dan Kendall is another guy who's been at the forefront of teaching business skills. At HPTI, we looked at four different tracks. Mentorship, we looked at basic skills, we looked at specialty areas, and we looked at success in business. And made sure that 25% of the program was being able to create success in business so that we can actually have the opportunity to share the work that we do. I have a policy I love to read. I read a lot of books. I, I subscribe to Kindle Unlimited so I can have an endless supply of unlimited books, and that's pretty cool. And I subscribe to Audible so I can, when I'm, when I, when I'm driving around, I can listen to all these books. 
And I have a policy, and that is for every interesting book I read about psychology or hypnosis or the power of the mind, I go buy a business book as well. And that policy has really helped me in the last couple of years. But I've seen this profession professionalized. In fact, the ICBCH has done something to meet this need. The professional associations have to not only be a place for a fancy dinner once in a while and some great seminars, but they also have to support the professionals who are trying to create a career out of this to help people. So the ICBCH, the International Certification Board of Clinical Hypnotherapists, has done a couple of things in the last two years to support entrepreneurship. One, we created an association with Unify Credit Union, a Unify Financial Services Credit Union, which allows you access, by the way, in every single state through 5,500 credit unions to access financial services directly related to your business development. Everything ranging from a credit card to a loan for a building. Jason Lynette just bought a building, a hypnotist who owns a building. By the way, that is a strategy that creates lifetime success. Because at the end of renting a building for 25 years, you've made somebody else rich. But when you buy your building, you build your business and you retire with your equity and your appreciation. That's a fantastic business strategy. I'll probably be buying a building also sometime within the next year. And hypnotists are starting to do that. And ICBCH wanted to make sure we had the opportunity to connect people to the financial resources to be successful. One of our members a year ago said, hey Richard, uh, we have a problem. And the problem is that we're all self-employed and as a result we don't have any, we don't have any health insurance. Can you figure out how we can get, a, get health insurance for ICBCH members? Having had that same problem for the last 20 some years, I said, you know what, let me check it out. So a year ago, I reached out to our liability insurance guy, you know, the guy who writes our liability policies for professional practice. And I said, hey, what about a, a group health care plan? And he said, I don't know anything about it, but I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll talk to my people and I'll let you know. I didn't expect to hear anything, but two weeks later, I was sitting in an office in Las Vegas with two guys from Dallas who were insurance executives who said, we have a plan for the ICBCH so that people who are self-employed and are members of the ICBCH can now access a group healthcare plan. This is a true group healthcare plan that actually pays the claims. It's administered by Cigna in all 50 states. Anyone ever hear of them, yeah. right? And gives a pharmacy card with comprehensive coverage and solves the problem of I'm self-employed and I don't have health care coverage. And by being able to support hypnotists in their entrepreneurial needs, we further the profession of hypnosis. And I imagine that the ICBCH isn't the only association that's providing those types of benefits. I think the others will probably look towards doing that as well. Here's another thing I notice. I notice that the future of hypnosis is bright because what I saw yesterday was of far better quality when I first came to Mid-America 12 years ago. Oh, it was fun and it was good, but it wasn't nearly the quality that it was yesterday. The speakers had content that provided specific strategies that you can take home and use with your client Monday at 10 a.m. because everyone knows that we're in private practice and we're not seeing anybody at 8 a.m. <laughs> why we're self-employed. <laughs> I just created a fear of flying course, fear of flying course. It's an online course. It's on subliminal science. It's 97 bucks. Some of you may have accessed it. And what's interesting about it is I think it's my best online course ever. And the reason why it's my best online course ever is because I had to pay attention to every aspect of quality in the course from sound to video, to transitions, to, to what clothes I was wearing, and I had a hard time with that. I'm, I'm the worst dressed hypnotist in our entire profession. I had to up my game and actually go buy some new clothes for that video. 
and, and it's not just a video, it's actually a series of about 30 different videos. And I interview industry experts in aviation, and the course is comprehensive, and there are scripts, and downloads, and audio files, and all kinds of things. And, and, and the reason why I made such a comprehensive, probably about a 20-hour course, is simple. In order to compete with all the other excellent courses out there, mine had to be good too. That was not the case 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I could put out low quality video <laughs> with bad audio, with, down, with PDFs that didn't download very well, and people bought my courses. But as technology has made the ability to create higher quality courses easier for all of us, and hypnotists have stepped up to the plate to share their expertise, what we now have are incredible learning experiences, opportunities, both live like this event and online as well. And that's one of the other reasons the hypnosis profession is bright. We have the opportunity to learn in so many different ways than we did before. I've been doing this for 30 years. I've been doing this for 30 years. I, I know some of you are like, no way, is he actually that old? <laughs> I know, I surprise you. I learned that for $12, you can take 12 years off at Walgreens. <laughs> and if you do that for as many years as, as, I have had, as I've been doing it, people just think that you're Dorian Gray. <laughs> Some of you are like, did he really just make a Dorian Gray reference? <laughs> yes, I did. Never, never speak to the dumbest member of your audience. <laughs> just, just teasing those of you who never read the book. Um, <laughs> but we have better quality training now than we ever have before. We have the opportunity to learn on YouTube. You know, people come up to me no matter where I am at whatever conference, they say, Richard, I learned hypnosis from you on YouTube. There are millions of hits on my YouTube channel, and there are millions of hits on the YouTube channels of many other hypnotists. And we have made learning freely available worldwide, and that is pretty cool. The opportunity to learn not just from books, but from video and media and live conferences. 30 years ago when I started doing hypnosis, I didn't take a training course. I just started doing it. In grad school, I was randomly hooked up with a uh, practicum supervisor who happened to be a student of Milton Erickson's. And he said, well, since you're gonna have to be seeing my clients here for your practicum, I guess I should teach you some things about hypnosis. And so he did. He taught me some Ericksonian techniques. He also taught me how to reflect back what I thought I heard my client say and a few other strategies. And so I began doing what I thought then was hypnosis with my clients. And it was all really trial by error. There weren't the conferences, there weren't the training classes, there weren't the resources that we have now. And it's great to be able to see people take advantage of the high quality programs that are there. There are, in fact, unlimited learning options. The last point I have as to why the future of hypnosis is bright is that the days I think of people saying it's fake are over. And the reason why I think the days of people saying it's fake are over is because we now know that thought changes structure. It's not a theory. It's an accepted fact. The mindfulness and meditation community knows the brain science, the cognitive neuroscience of how what wires together fires together can be unwired when we fire something new. There's even pictures of it on the internet. And when Michael Yapko revised what has been the best-selling book in the field of hypnosis, Trance Work, this past fall, as a fifth edition, he included piles and piles and piles and piles of research showing that hypnosis is something that not only changes thoughts, but changes beings as well. And the science at this point is undisputed. And the work that we're doing impacts people forever. The clients who I've worked with over the years, every now and then I run into them like at a Walmart two or three years later. And as a therapist, because I have licenses as a marriage and family therapist, when I run into a client in public, the response I usually get is, <laughs> but when I run into somebody who was a hypnosis client of mine, they almost always say, 
Oh my gosh, Richard, is that you? Wow, hi, Richard. Hey, it's so good to see you. You know, I still haven't smoked. I knew, I knew you wouldn't recognize me because I'm not 800 pounds anymore. Thank you, thank you for being my hypnotist. No longer am I dressed in ratty clothes. I'm wearing a Rolex and custom made shoes because you hypnotize me to attract success. By the way, I brought Victoria's book up here. Catch this. This is not just a book you should buy because I wrote a thing in the front of it. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, I was on Amazon looking at rankings of books to discover Victoria's book is the number one best-selling book in numerous categories, including hypnosis, positive psychology, law of attraction, etc., because it's got practical resources for everyone. Although I do prefer when you stop by the table rather than buying her book, you buy mine. <laughs> or you could get Jason's. But the point of the matter is, there's so much high quality stuff out there and there's enough for all of us that we don't have to worry about another hypnotist being on the opposite corner. My hope is that I shared something with you this morning that was helpful to you, that you can take home with you to your work in helping other people. I also hope that in February you come to the HBTI conference because it's going to be warm there. <laughs> and it's the, it's the conference for those who are passionate about helping other people. But if you have questions, I'm going to be hanging around the next couple of days. I'm more than happy to answer them. But I hope you have an absolutely wonderful experience for the next two days. Thank you. Jason Lynette here once again, and as always, thank you so much for interacting with this program, for leaving your reviews online, sharing it on your social media streams, or letting it be a continual reference point as you discuss hypnosis. For more like this, head over to the show notes at worksmarthypnosis.com, and let's hang out in person. Join us at worksmarthypnosislive.com, that's the upcoming live training event, or get the digital access version at hypnoticworkers.com. Dot com. Get the all access pass, easy payment libraries, all ready to go and set up. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you soon. Thanks for listening to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast at WorkSmartHypnosis.com. Hey there, it's Jason, and I want you to be one of the first to find out as we upload amazing new content. So do this right now. Click the subscribe button right here on this video. That's going to link you to our YouTube channel here, and you will be the first to find out as new resources and downloads are made available. Do it now.